At this point, we've learned a lot about forces. Forces are pushes or pulls on an object. Forces can cause change in motion. Forces can speed up an object or slow it down. Forces can be contact forces, such as applied forces or friction forces, but forces can also be non-contact, such as gravity or magnetic forces. Forces are most commonly measured in newtons, and one newton is about the weight of a medium apple. Pushing forces, also called compression, can be measured using a floor scale, while pulling forces, also called tension, can be measured using a spring scale. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about net force. That is, the addition of more than one force. So consider that you could push on an object with a force of 100 newtons. And if your friend can push with a force of 60 newtons, then how much force can you both apply to the box if you both push? Well, first, let's draw a little picture of the object with both forces being represented by arrows in the direction of the force. The 100 newton arrow, that's your push, is shown to the right here. Then we have your friend's 60 newton arrow, and we'll draw it a little bit shorter to show that it is a smaller force. And so here we are with the object and the forces on it. And we call this little sketch a free body diagram, which we often just write as FBD. The free body diagram is used to make a situation look really simple. So now let's consider what's happening here by referring to our free body diagram. Now, since you're both pushing in the same direction, that is, the force arrows on the free body diagram are both in the same direction, we could just add the forces together and determine that the box receives a total applied force of 160 newtons to the right. So, we'd say that the net force on the object is 160 newtons to the right. The change in motion of the box would be as if there was just a single force of 160 newtons to the right. Another example, what if your friend was pushing, this time in the opposite direction of you? So they're pushing on the other side of the box. So you're pushing with 100 newtons to the right, and they're pushing the other way with 60 newtons to the left. Then what happens? Well, let's first draw our free body diagram. And this time, the arrows would be going in opposite directions. Your force is going to the right again, but in this case, your friend's force is to the left, a little bit smaller again. So your forces are opposing each other. So they wouldn't add the same anymore, would they? Your friend's force would be canceling out part of your force. So you're pushing harder, so the net applied force experienced by the box is your force, 100 newtons, minus your friend's force, 60 newtons, which equals 40 newtons to the right. So we would say that the net force on the object is 40 newtons to the right. The change in motion of the object would be as if there was just a single force of 40 newtons to the right. One more example. What if you were pushing to the right and your friend was pushing to the left, but we also had a frictional force. That is, maybe your object was on a rough concrete floor, making it hard to move. The friction force, in this case, is 40 newtons to the left, opposing the motion of the box. So, let's first make our free body diagram. So, in this case, we have your force pushing right, 
100 newtons, and then your friend's force pushing left, 60 newtons. Now the frictional force is opposing the motion, and so it's going left at 40 newtons. And so you can show it along the surface here where it's applied. Now, adding up for a net force, well, we have 100 newtons going right, minus 60 newtons going left, and then another 40 newtons going left, which we have to subtract. So we add all that up and we have 100 minus 60 minus 40, and that equals zero. So what does that mean? A net force of zero is almost like having no force acting on the object at all. The motion doesn't change. We would say that the forces in this case are balanced. That is, they all add up to zero, or that the net force is zero, which is a very interesting case. In this tutorial, we learned how to consider more than one force on a particular object. We first draw a free body diagram, just to make it easier to figure out. And then we add up all the forces, subtracting those forces that go in the opposite direction. The result of this addition is called the net force. And the net force determines the change in motion of the object. We also considered the special case where the net force equals zero. And recognized that we can say its forces are balanced. It is a special case in that we can have any number of forces acting on the object but the object's motion acts as if there are no forces acting on it. 